All right, here we go. Hi, everybody. This is Randall. Uh, I'm here with Sunil. Uh, right. He's hey going to be walking us through some stuff today. Hi, everybody. Let me just minimize all of this. Uh, but first, I think we should do a recap of the uh, previous session. Yeah. Hey, guys. Uh, so uh, I've actually uploaded the code that uh, we live coded last time here in the GitHub repo. So feel free to go check it out. Um, and um, I've even added the neural network basics um, just to kind of give you guys an overview. Um, so what, what we were trying to do last uh, episode was essentially build a model, build a very basic model that does sentiment analysis on IMDb movie reviews. Uh, so a very simplistic model that uh, classified uh, text into positive sentiment or negative sentiment. Now, what we did was we used uh, label data that was available here, uh, which had about 50,000 movie reviews, uh, uh, which had 25 positive, 25,000 positive and 25,000 negative reviews. Um, so just to kind of walk you through, uh, you know, how the code uh, uh, or rather how the flow worked. So we first, um, you know, Luckily, the data set comes uh, with a lot of pre-processing already. So all we have to do is load the files, maybe remove some uh, you know, tags, um, just to kind of cleanse it. But the second step is, remember, um, the neural network doesn't necessarily understand words or sentences. So we need to transform the data into a format where the neural network can understand. Now, one of the one of the steps there is actually tokenizing. So, what we do is break down the sentences into words, and we say, "Hey, neural network, learn the relationships between these words," and um, essentially we have labels as well, right? So, uh, the relationship between these words mean that it's positive or negative. That's at a high level what the neural network learns. Now, uh, what we did was we tokenized, so we used uh, a library from Keras to uh, tokenize the words, and then uh, we convert them into sequences, uh, which means that the words are replaced by an index. Again, the neural network doesn't care uh, what number we give it. Uh, it just cares about how these numbers um, you know, appear or the, uh, uh, the order uh, and how they interact with each other. The next thing what we'll do is we will standardize our input sequence. So which means that every input that we give into the system is of the same length. Now we'll pad it with spaces. And in this case, we'll just choose a hey, 500 because that seemed to be a good uh, uh, it, it capture, capturing a good number of reviews there. We then uh, we basically have two different arrays. One is our training array and the other one is our test uh, test set. So within the training array, we have X and Y. X are the um, actually the input data. Y is the label, so the array of labels. Now, we use something called the multilayer perceptron, which is one of the most simplistic of, um, uh, simplistic of neural networks. So it's a it's good- It's a nice complicated name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's simplistic enough for people uh, to start on and um, uh, to see what's happening. As you can see, the entire neural network can be defined in about roughly seven, eight lines of code. So what we do is we first uh, actually have an embedding layer. And if you remember, the embedding is done so that we uh, kind of map something from a really high dimension into a low dimension. Uh, so that we can represent uh, and project the words that mean or are related together to be close to each other. So this is a really good way for the neural network uh, to um, in, you know, act on the data rather than something being of a really high dimension. And then um, we have two uh, the, uh, fully connected layers. Uh, remember, uh, uh, so 
switch here. Remember our multi-layer perceptron looked something like this. So this is the input layer. These are the hidden layers, uh, which are the fully connected layers. That means that they are connected to each other. Uh, every neuron in the layer is connected to every other neuron uh, in the subsequent layer. So that's what it means. And then- um, I, I have a quick question screen. about that fully connected graph there. When you're sending data through that, does it go through cycles within those layers? Uh, it's, a good, uh, it's a good question because we will actually deal with uh, networks like that today. Uh, uh, but this particular network, uh, what it does is uh, it, a single, let's say you uh, send a single sample, right? Single sample, input sample. It goes through the layer one by one. Okay. Uh, so there is no extra computation on the layer, like a loop. So well, this is just a, this is just a, a basic uh, you know feed forward network. I, I guess I'm just curious if they're fully connected, but it's 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 acyclic because it's going in in one direction that full. So if you remember, we do two passes, right? So we do, uh, so the neural network learns by a process oh, called back back propagation. Right. Okay. Right. But in the forward phase, it only goes in one direction. Gotcha. So the inputs aren't fed to itself. Gotcha. Cool. Interesting. And model training uh, phase we saw here, uh, we run it through about, I think we did 10 epochs and you know, we were able to uh, get some fun, uh, uh, you know, predictions. Uh, so all of this is available uh, on GitHub. You can clone it um, and uh, work on this. Uh, so this actually can train on a CPU as well. So if you want to get it uh, running on your laptop, all you need to do is change this one aspect here, where do you go? Yeah, one aspect here instead of a CPU, a GPU, switch it to CPU and it will work. Awesome. Also, what I did was I actually did code this up with uh, an, uh, an input. So MXNet, uh, you know, there's a beta uh, for Gluon interface. So Gluon is a completely imperative uh, interface uh, into MXNet. What we saw earlier was a mixed interface. So we had some declarative aspects, we had some imperative aspects. With Gluon, it's, it's uh, imperative. So it's much easier to debug, kind of like look at uh, everything's linear so you can add breakpoints, uh, you can kind of visualize things. So it's, it's more programmer friendly uh, on, uh, to, to um, you know, say the least. It's, it's, I guess it's more within the developer mindset, right? Because you're going Correct. in, in this iterative method rather than this mathematical model. Correct. Correct. So, um, so it does have benefits, which, uh, you know, maybe we'll cover it in a different, uh, episode. Uh, but an example of something like this is PyTorch, which is again, really, uh, popular uh, in the research community, which is a completely interfa uh, uh, imperative, uh, framework. Now we did the same here. Um, I just did a fun uh, part where we were collecting how our loss function worked. And this is kind of what you want to see is with every epoch, you want to see your loss decrease because that's when you know your network is learning. And typically this is a good curve to see uh, like, you know, within the first uh, few epochs, your loss really reducing and um, you know, uh, and, and it tapers to the end because you know the amount of learning you have to do uh, decreases, um, you know, towards the end because your network is already learned in the first few phase. So that's the that's the recap, and uh, maybe Randall, we can uh, spend uh, five minutes. Uh, you know, users who aren't necessarily you know familiar to the AWS environment, let's show sure. them how to get. Started on AWS really uh, quickly. So I'll switch it over to my screen. Uh, okay, so those of you who are in the chat right now or, or on the stream, 
out of curiosity, how many of you, you know, if you've used the deep learning AMI, you know, send an emoji, let me know that you've used it. If you haven't used it, you can also say, LOL, what is the deep learning AMI? Um, so let me know that you This is called one and a half factors of authentication, by the way. Um, what I'm gonna do is hop over into the EC2 console and I'm going to spin up an AMI, an Amazon machine image. And I'm going to spin it up on a, a fairly sizable instance. Uh, and I'll probably use spot pricing. So if I go and look for the deep learning AMI here, you see I have a couple different versions. I've got the, the AWS version and I've got the Ubuntu version. Uh, we'll go with the Ubuntu version today or? Yeah, we'll go with Ubuntu, yes. It's more developer friendly. I, <laughs> Easy I to get all your packages. I'm personally partial to Yum and, and CentOS and uh, all of it. I US, agree. But... I, I, yeah, I had my CentOS days. I, I spend more time in uh, <laughs> uh, Ubuntu these days, frankly. And I think today we should go with like a G3 16x large. Sure. <laughs> On the spot market, sure. Why not? Uh, request spot instances. We'll say a maximum price of $2 an hour. Uh, and then I don't really need any IAM roles. And you know, sometimes I, I can put in some user data here that's just a bash script or something that'll run and preset some stuff up for me. But for now, we'll skip all that. I'll, I'll put in a fairly sizable volume just because we might be dealing with a lot of data. Uh, and then I'll just add a quick tag. I'll say name is gonna be LOL machine learning is cool. Actually, I'm gonna call it Skynet. <laughs> and we'll launch it. It'll take a hot second. Oh. I am out of spot instances. <laughs> so let's choose a different instance type. Actually, let me just go into the console and cancel some of my spot requests. That happens when you're doing too many cool things. I, I have a lot of different things going on. Uh, it might just be that that instance type isn't available. So Let's go with the G3-4X large. Yeah, anybody in the chat, like, um, let us know if you've done deep learning or um, some cool use cases that you're trying to solve. So this will take a, a hot second to, to provision. It shouldn't take too long. Um, and the advantage of the spot market is that it will go with whatever the current price is of the market, but it won't, uh, oh, capacity not available. No, I guess people are really using these G3s right now. Let me switch to another region. Sorry. Learning. I should have just gone for the on-demand instance. Yep. this deep learning one uh, and I'll just go for the G3 and I won't do a spot instance this time I'll add the name Skynet West Launch this thing. Should come up pretty quick. The spot market is great, but sometimes gotta go with that on demand. 
Okay, so this is up. All right. Why do you wait? You want to switch the screen? I'll I'll start with um, I'll start talking about what we have. Sure. sure. The instance is already up, actually. It's really fast. So, ultimately, what we will solve is uh, you know a model that helps you pronounce the uh, English words the American way. Um, so, you know, uh, me being a non-native non speaker, uh, I mean, uh, it's always helpful to see how uh, Americans pronounce. Now, so, when you say pronounce the American way, I think what you're trying to say is pronounce the correct way. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I think uh, that we can uh, disagree to uh, what, to some what, extent, uh, what would be an example word like aluminium versus aluminum or airplane? Versus right, airplane? Uh, potato, potato, oh. um, you know things like that. So there is the um, so there is a nice uh, data set um, uh, which the CMU uh, pronouncing dictionary. So I was thinking of cool ideas and. Um, I thought like, hey, uh, why not like teach a model to pronounce? And uh, quite honestly, it was it's actually a funny uh, story. Like, I think my wife mispronounced uh, something. And I was like, wait, and that kind of inspired me to uh, do that because you know clearly, like all of us native speakers tend to do these uh, mistakes often. It's okay. I make um, mistakes, and I am a native speaker. <laughs> so. Yeah, English uh, it's an interesting language, right? Like we, uh, if you look at some of the, uh, um, you know, European languages, or um, to that extent, uh, uh, Asian or Indian languages, they tend to have a lot more, a um, lot more than just you know 26 alphabets. So you can really stress, you know, when to stress on um, uh, and uh, enunciate uh, correctly. So the idea is. Um, we'll take give, given a word, we'll just split it into actual phonemes where we know where to stress on uh, in uh, you know certain words. For example, we can look here. Um, the word s e i z u r e, you know, kind of like translates into s i c and z h e r, so seizure, right? That's the right way. Um, so this uh, data set has about, uh, I think it's about, yeah, 134,000 words. Uh, we're gonna use that uh, to train other words that it might see, which is not in the dictionary. I mean, the dictionary clearly has a lot more words. I think you did look up uh, the last time. I, 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 I feel like it was like 180,000 or something like that. Um, I, I only know 10,000 words, if that. <laughs> So, um, yeah, um, so we'll use this um, data set to create that model. But before that, we need to actually learn a little more in terms of how to construct uh, a basic model that does sequence-to-sequence uh, -sequence, uh, translation. So before we jump into that, can you just define what our input goal is and what our output goal is? Yes. So we'll do something like this. Um, the built here. So our input go. Here's some sample words. So we'll give it my name, and it tells you where it, it actually spits out what it is called as uh, arpabet uh, phoneme. So we know where to stress on, in, yeah, uh, uh, it kind of spells out how to s pronounce the word. So I, that's, I that's spent what all of last night learning about this format. <laughs> it has like awesome. all kinds of different stresses and very really interesting. Correct. Yeah, you can try on the Wikipedia page, or, you know, yeah, the symbols, um, you know, hey, uh, when, yeah, because, you know. Stress. Correct. Um, but before that, um, 
I thought it'd be good to go with a toy example that some some of us can really easily grok uh, and use what we learn um, to do other problems. So this is a very simple example, but really powerful because the network we'll end up building uh, can do amazing things, um, can be used to do other things uh, with very little modifications. So, so it's a really powerful concept here. Um, so, you know, I thought it'd be cool to uh, actually train a model to do basic math. We, we, you know, uh, what's going to happen is the model, the inputs are going to be, you know, strings like this. Like we'll say, hey, five plus four plus nine is eighteen. One plus four plus two is seven, and so on. We'll generate a bunch of these samples, uh, give it to the network. It's going to figure out, hey, uh, what to do when it sees a plus sign and uh, when it sees a star sign. Wow. So I think the markdown didn't like me uh, having them close to each other. So I'll probably put them in. Um, uh, uh, doesn't like it. <laughs> but yeah, you guys get the point here. Um, now. Um, so what we're going to do is use a type of network called a recurrent neural network. As the name suggests, there is a loop within um, uh, the network. Um, I won't go too much into details on the network, but um, essentially we can use them to, uh, we can give them you know, sequences of a single length uh, and get a one-to-one -one mapping where input and output sizes are similar. Uh, these models are really good at handling, um, you know, text data or uh, speech data. So modeling sequences in general, right? Text happens to be a sequence. Uh, audio happens to be a sequence. Even video is a sequence. So anything that is represented as a sequence, we can use recurrent neural networks, and that even applies to time series data. Interesting. Yeah. So. Uh, in this example, it's it's going to be a one-to-one -one output, right? So um, uh, we we have a string, we output a string. Okay. So in this case, what we're doing essentially is a sequence-to-sequence -sequence conversion. We have an input sequence of numbers and operators, and we have an output sequence. In this case, is a number. But remember the model doesn't understand um, you know, the numbers, right? So all it knows is when it sees one plus two is each character individually, right? So the input sequence actually gets broken into three characters. It, it doesn't really understand the numbers. And I'll, I'll, I'll dig into that a little more. So let's say um, let's say we had uh, um, uh, you know for input sequence in this case um, you know it's A B C D and we're saying hey it maps to W X Y Z uh, what I mean some some arbitrary mapping right so we can have the network learn uh, just by giving it uh, you know specific input sequences that hey A corresponds to dub uh, B corresponds to X and so on, so it can learn uh, to do uh, the conversion without us explicitly telling it to, hey, this is how it works. Questions so far, Randall? Uh, nothing in the Twitch chat. If you guys have questions, I am a little flummoxed, but I'm waiting to hope that I become less flummoxed. I think other people might be waiting as well. Okay. You know what, I think we'll start coding and then go to uh, the whole encoder decoder concept. Okay. Um, okay, so as we saw, we can do language translation, image caption, sequence conversion. Uh, we can do things like that with uh, this whole concept. Okay, so what we need to do is first, uh, we need to create the data set, right? So. In this case, it's easy. We don't need to like find a data set because we know how to generate math sequences. <laughs> so uh, we'll import 
X map, X. Um, we also need a random generator because so that we can generate the random numbers. So um, we'll say we'll generate a thousand samples. Um, also, we'll just define how many numbers we want to operate on, right? So uh, that means that we'll have a max of three numbers in the sequence and two operators, right? Okay. Number of uh, numbers, to, uh, yeah. Operate on um, largest number ten, right? So largest is uh, spelled wrong. Yep. Okay. Um, and what what we'll need to do is it's always good to uh, yeah get a random seed in uh, so it's, we can debug easily. Uh, we'll define a character set. Um, the character set, uh, remember last time we had our uh, entire corpus of words, right? Uh, whatever existed in our corpus. So in this case, uh, our character set is limited, which is, you know, zero to nine. And uh, we'll just use that to uh, construct our sequences. Uh, actually, we'll use the star operator, the uh, plus sign as well, and we'll use space for padding. So, bear with me. <laughs> okay. In Vim, you would have generated this with a quick, like, at yeah. Your... I mean, I could have rather written a program to do this as well, but. Well, it's a little hard typing. Uh, yeah, also, sorry guys, I uh, have a little bit of cold, um, so might be a little slow today in uh, responding to questions and not. You're doing great. Thank you. Do we need, we, we don't need equals, right? Because we're just passing in the uh, input. Right. Okay. Yeah, because the input and uh, output is separated, uh, separate, right? So we'll have a different arrays. So it's not parsing it. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. If we were generating it that way, then uh, yeah, we would probably need uh, if we're, like, uh, if we were the passing in the samples that way. Correct. So um, input. One second, friends. You can keep going. Yeah. So guys, we're going to do input sequence length. Now, this is going to be like uh, you know we have three numbers, two operators. What what is like? What's our maximum size? That's going to be eight, if we kind of think about. Uh, so if we had 10 plus 10 plus 10, right? So that that, that means we would have eight um, uh, as our max uh, input sequence length. Output sequence length. Now, our max is going to be like uh, um, uh, our our max is going to be essentially four digits, right? So um, because it's 10 into 10 uh, into 10, which is a thousand. So that's our max number. Okay, awesome. Um, now let's let, actually write code to um, generate the data. So will it be able to parse 10, even though we've only given it because I get that it's. Yeah, we will we'll encode it a different way, right? So remember, we'll 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 use a representation where the sequence is actually the sequence that we send in uh, won't be representing that. So our output, yeah. So okay. we'll we'll have our encoding scheme. Okay. Okay. Um, Let's say our inputs uh, labels, right? So um, we'll create a lookup table essentially. So char um, so character to integer. So this is where we'll represent um, um, you know our our pairs. 
So we'll say something like, um, let me actually define the loop so far. Uh, enumerate character, character set. Right? So this is just our, we're just converting whatever character we see into an integer. You can do dictionary comprehensions in Python. I'm just. Sorry? You can do dictionary comprehensions in Python. Yeah. There's a lot of different ways. I don't know. It's sometimes it's, we all have our own syntactic quirks <laughs> that we get used to. Okay. Um, so we'll actually take um, something like, um, you know, yeah, I've declared the same one, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so n samples. Um, now, what we'll do is uh, we need to generate the numbers, right? So for so, uh, range, so n numbers. Uh, so we're going to generate um, three numbers, right? So we're going to generate the three numbers, um, and it's going to be at random. So we'll do random dot rand int. And we'll do one comma the largest. Right. Uh, one because we don't want. I mean, we don't want zero in there. It doesn't really help us with addition or multiplication, right? So we skip zero. Okay. Um, so we have. Uh, for simplicity, what I'll do is uh, we, we'll just take a single operator. So we'll not do mixed operations. So we'll not do like three plus two into five and so on, because uh, we, we can get to that. But you know, in this case, it's um, it's simple. So we'll do um, we'll just do a choice, um, and we need to compute the RHS, right? So um, so we'll say LHS is our input sequence, RHS is your output sequence. So we're trying to compute that. Um, at, at, you really could just call eval on that, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna do, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it, uh, just a, <laughs> I'm just gonna spell it out so that people, uh, gotcha. yeah. Um, up equal to addition. Uh, actually, yeah, I'm going to say arches equal to one. So we have this right, arches. Sorry, this should be LHS, yeah. right? Okay. Um, and now what we need to do is convert this into a string. Um, uh, the LHS is a number, right? So what we'll do is, uh, because we, we need to convert it to a string and look it up in our uh, lookup table to get the a corresponding index. So, so that's that's what we'll do. So we'll do something like um, str of L for L and LHS. Um, and then uh, we'll convert uh, this entire thing into a string um, where um, we, we need to connect the numbers, right? So we have, we, let's say we have generated one, two, and three. We need to say one plus two plus three or can one just, into two. Can we just do op dot join and then LHS? Yes. So we'll do exactly. So we'll do. Um, I don't think you can do op dot join, right? Like op is a string. Um, I can't do this. Can I? No, you you can do op dot join. Okay, we'll see. Yeah, opposite string, it should, should work. Um, uh, that's, that's it. So, uh, but we need to pad. 
Remember, we need to pad this. So what we'll, to yeah, to we'll pad with spaces. So oh, okay. what we'll do is um, input sequence. I need to go, yeah, comma, the string, right? So this should do that. Encoded. Now we need to get the encoded input, remember? So the encoded input is basically, we're gonna look it up in the table. So character int, uh, we'll call it ch for ch in padded string. And we'll do the same for RHS, which is, um, rather, we already have the padded string. So, um, yeah. But we don't need to pad the right hand side, do we? Uh, we do, because remember, like, uh, we'll, we'll have, uh, we can have, let's say you get two into two into two, that's only going to be uh, eight, whereas nine into nine, nine is, uh, okay. well, nine, nine, 981, I don't know, something like that, three digits. <laughs> Uh, I think it's 983. I don't know. Getting bad at math. I'll read okay. the model after this. Yeah, we can test the model. Uh, so, padded string is um, I'm just going to come. Okay, um, we need our string variable, which is going to be op dot join RHS, right? And then, well, we won't the right hand side not have any operators? It's just going to be that is correct. <laughs> Sorry, I was <laughs> no worries, it's right. hard sometimes. Yep, <laughs> there's this repetition in my mind, so. I just went that way. Um, coder, um, yeah, label, and uh, we're gonna basically say inputs dot append. Um, uh, encoded inputs. Label. Probably might be the hardest part for that. Right. And then return inputs, labels. Let's just we don't have a, a number that we're doing, right? Oh, oh and samples as input, right? Oh, what did I call it? Oh, I didn't uh, execute the cell. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Right. So we can see 12 is our space, space, space. Uh, so 6 plus 5 plus 6, uh, which is 17. Um, right. So this is, and you can see here, this is 177. Right? Yep. So, okay. Let's, uh, we'll look. Never leave at one sample, right? Which always check uh, two, at least have two data points. So let's do this. So nine plus nine plus seven, which is 25, and we have 25. Perfect. Good, okay, uh, first attempt. So now it's like easy, right? So we have our, we'll call it data X, data Y, and um, I think we had a n samples variable, so. Okay, so what we'll do is iterators. We have our data, so let's train iter equals x dot io dot nd array data iter. Um, so it takes, uh, 
um, the data and then label label wait data y and then um, yeah we can just leave it at that it also takes batch size we'll just define 32 as uh, our batch size again arbitrary seems like a good number large enough Do you just arrive at that batch number from experience from building these models? Just instinct. Um, I just think that 32 is you know big enough. Um, so usually the batch sizes are anywhere between. Uh, I want to say like people use anywhere between two to 128 or uh, 256. There are larger batch sizes as well, but we'll we'll just use this. Um, I think I lost you, Randall, but. Um, can you still hear me? Yep, yep um, I'm good. I, I turned okay. off my camera for a second. I'll be back. Okay. So we'll do train I turned out. Um, we'll just uh, print um, how our um, uh, label and uh, inputs look like. Um, nope, doesn't like it. Um, index seven is out of bounds for it. Okay, I'll debug. Oh, yep. You see what the error is there? <laughs> you see the error? Um, it says list attribute has no attribute shape. Yeah. So, oh, np array. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yep. Yep. Really need to deal with uh, numpy arrays. There you go. Thousand samples, input is of uh, thousand comma eight, thousand comma four. That looks good. Now, okay. Now comes the model magic. Um, so, So we'll declare our variables. Uh, so our data variables, remember uh, from last time, um, like our target. Uh, we need to, because we're using a mixed paradigm, we need to say, hey, uh, here's a placeholder variable and we'll connect the data to the data iterator and uh, symbol here. So in fact, what happens here is um, there's actually a field called data name and uh, um, label name, so they need to match. Does that make sense? Yep. yep. Okay. So what we'll do is uh, we'll use a encoder before you go on, I just want to say, if, if you don't specify those, the default is data and target, right? Uh, the default is data and softmax underscore label, <laughs> oh. <That's laughs> which is uh, kind of odd. Uh, we won't use a softmax here, so which is why I thought it's always just nice to kind of give it proper names. Um, OK, those are just syntactical things. Um, now, the, the network we're going to use is, is going to be uh, an encoder-decoder network. Um, what that means is we'll give our input sequence uh, to this uh, variant of um, 
the recurrent neural network called as an LSTM. LSTM is, stands for long short term memory. Now, as you as you might imagine, right, like with uh, when modeling sequences, um, there are dependencies that maybe really we usually look at through a window. There might be dependencies that fall outside of that window, right? So the context may have been a couple of sentences, uh, you know, apart, or the word you're referring to maybe you know five words away, and your window size happens to be three. Does that make sense? So uh, there's a network that was proposed to kind of uh, uh, you know mitigate this exact uh, problem which is called an LSTM, which is long short term memory. What this does is an LSTM basically has, um, let, me, uh, let me actually maybe pull, let me get a screen. All right, so an LSTM has a memory cell. What it does is it keeps track of things that are important and forgets things that are not important. So the network learns to keep things that are interesting and uh, important. And what's the kind of deciding factor and what's important and what's not? Uh, it depends on uh, the data that we feed it. So it looks at the sequences, it knows what might be interesting and what uh, um, might not be. So the network learns that. But there's a problem here, as you might see, right? Uh, there's a loop. There's a loop in the network, right? With recurrent neural network. Now, which means that, you know, um, you know, just as we know with recursion, like, well, when does it end? Um, so what, uh, with LSTMs, when we train LSTMs, what we do is we have a process called as unrolling the loop. What we will do is, based on the number of, um, you know, the whatever the sequence length that we feed it in, we'll unroll it that many times, uh, so that we convert a, a looped model into a linear chain. Right, the length of the linear chain is determined by uh, uh, the sequence length, essentially. So we're basically calling the recursion to a certain depth and Correct. taking a exactly. sequence of calls. And yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. You know they, they do that in the C compile in GCC. They they do some sort of loop unrolling sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loop unrolling. Yep. Yep. It's 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 pretty common. Um, um, I mean your compiler uh, will do that for short loops. It doesn't make sense to kind of jump a uh, jump to a different uh, uh, context. So, yep. All right. Um, that's a good analogy. <laughs> Feel free to use. And it. sorry. Feel free to use it in the future. Yeah. Okay. Uh, encoder input sequence. Uh, what it does is it, it converts this input sequence into this encoded state. So in some representation, so the encoder now has mapped whatever it has learned into this magic state. Now, the, now what the decoder does is it will take the input sequence uh, from the decoder, uh, sorry, from the encoder and also the state that it has, and it will use both of these things to actually come up and uh, predict what the output is. So this is pretty magical in, in a sense. What, what, what we're doing is transforming the data from one dimension to and storing it in another dimension uh, or in a, in a learning state. Now we can decode it in any format. So for example, we can feed this images and it's going to learn how to represent images and convert the image representation into something completely different. Like we can convert into text or maybe into audio, whatever we desire to. So is this kind of stuff how you can do translation from one language to another? 
at a very simplistic way? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So um, we can certainly, so this is exactly the basis in which we do what we call as neural machine translation. So translating from English to French or French to German, we can use uh, uh, the basic concept that we learned here. And it's basically keeping some sort of internal representation of the state before it yeah. executes whatever your specified output is? Yeah, yeah, it learns. Um, so I've uh, I, I've shared some links as well, some text. Um, uh, so guys, uh, you know, feel free to kind of uh, get a little more into what that's all about. Um, I'm going to focus mostly on code um, so that we get our network going. So we'll have our first uh, got LSTM one. Um, we'll use. So we go here, we have a bunch of different RNNs that we can use. And um, I'll just use one of the friendly RNN um, implementation called Fused RNN. So, and uh, it's, it's got it's only GPU. It's it's only GPU supported. Um, it's it's just uh, I won't get into too much details, but it's pretty efficient. Uh, so we'll use that. So fused on and cell. So um, so the number of hidden nodes uh, will be equal to uh, essentially the bat size. Um, and say we'll say prefix. We just attach it with something that's um, you know readable, so that when we visualize, we know what's happening. Um, so there's a variable called get next state. So essentially, we have we're trying to chain uh, we're trying to chain all the inputs. So the get next state is just essentially creating a chain between uh, all our input sequences. Um, the good thing is, uh, Randall, like if people don't even follow the whole network, you can you can use one of the most fantastic tools uh, known to all developers, but actually the most underrated one. Do you know what I'm talking about? Then copy paste. <laughs> Just so you, can, you can copy my network code and use it to do other things, and. What we'll do is, as you'll see, this network that I'm building right now, we'll use it to do the word pronunciation things with very little modifications. So the, the, it seems to me, the more that we do this sort of stuff, that the gross majority of our time is not spent on designing the actual network. It's spent on transforming inputs and outputs. Yep, very true. Very true. Uh, okay. So remember, uh, so the last time, um, I think we did a one hot encoding, right? So. Um, I, I don't think we talked about that. What is that? Oh, okay. Yeah, I couldn't remember. So why one hot? So we converted uh, from characters to integer indices, right? Um, but what happens is the from a label, uh, we think about how the machine looks at the labels when we have categorical data. Let's say we're trying to classify cats, dogs, and giraffes, and lions. Now, there's no real hierarchy between or natural ordering between those category labels. So what typically we do is we try to, uh, and that's important because uh, the algorithm may start assuming a certain hierarchy and might map things the wrong way. Uh, but the good thing is uh, we can force a certain kind of ordering, and that's done by uh, a, a technique called as one-hot encoding. And um, we 
tend to use that very common in any natural language processing stuff. Um, but basically, the short story is machine learning algorithms don't understand, you know, whatever the data that you give it directly. So we need to be in a, a certain encoded format where it can operate on and understand the ordering, which is why we convert it. So one, so hot, one hot encoding, I'll, I'll give you an example of what it means. Um, where am I? Uh, let's say we have labels, um, you know, cats and dogs, right? Now, this can kind of map to something like, you know, zero and one, right? That would be our, that, that, that'd be converting into numbers. But what, 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 what we need to do is there's, there's no real ordering in terms of like cats and dogs or something like that. What we need to do is actually give it uh, in a format where uh, there's a representation in every every label. So what we'll do is for a cat, what we'll do is something like one zero and zero one, right? So essentially, based on which bit is on. So one hot is for getting rid of anything that could be introduced by ordering in your input? Yeah, so yeah. So it's just, it's not like shuffling, it's just like finding no, all Yeah, it's it's usually used, uh, uh, we, we will tend to use it for uh, a lot in terms of the labels. Um, um, in this case, we'll use it for both. Uh, but essentially the idea is uh, not letting the, um, not letting the model figure out or assume a certain ordering and uh, it's also it doesn't understand numbers or uh, yeah the input it, text. it understands in a, in a representation uh, you know format or vector so gotcha. that's what we're trying to do here okay so what on? kind of prevents your model from learning order where there is none um it kind of, but uh, the idea is it's a representation that the model can understand. The simple, uh, a simple logic is we need to feed the model, feed the data in a format where which the model can understand, and that that's one hot is a representation that is really popular and and used. So uh, we can just say um, we can just use a, 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 um, um, a built-in function to do this uh, in MXNet. Okay. Now, um, the interesting thing is we need to say, um, uh, we, we need to specify what our data, uh, um, um, you know, size is. So, so in, so that will be our length of character set. The variable name, but I mean, that's it. Are you okay? Randall, are you still on or? Let's see. Okay, Randall's grabbing something. Um, I think I'm still on, so all right. Um, so uh, once we do the one hot uh, encoding, we just need to make sure we have it in the right format uh, so that we can feed it. Um, so transpose is, we're just transposing the matrix essentially um, to, uh, to the shape. So data one hot. Don't worry too much about this for now. Um, so now we need to unroll. So the LSTM. So LSTM one dot unroll. There's a function that does this, uh, and the length of unrolling is our input sequence length. Remember, uh, that's, and then our inputs equal to data. One hot. 
and then layout equal to okay layout. So what we're doing. Uh, So we have different layouts uh, when we represent the data. So it's like uh, NTC, TNC, uh, and you know each stand for. Uh, so, so N is so, the number. Yeah, it's just reading N is the number of is the batch size, T is the sequence length, and C is the number of dimensions. Correct. In the states. So batch size. And there are the different outputs because you might want to access the data in different ways? Correct. So we, we just need to match the shapes. I mean, it, it really doesn't matter the ordering as long as um, it's consistent throughout. Right, so T represents the sequence length. So we're just going to say uh, N is the bat size, C. Um, so that's just the shape of our data. Like our, our ND array will be uh, shaped that way. That's all we're saying. So if we change this to NTC, we'll need to change how we transpose here. Yeah, so that, that, that's, that's kind of essentially what it is. Um, we'll say L out, comma, we'll get our encoded, uh, we'll get our encoded state from the first um, unrolled um, loop, essentially. So remember this uh, diagram? We get our encoded state. That's what we'll store there. Encode state. Uh, encode state edge for hidden. Um, so a lot of this is uh, a little um, I'll come and explain maybe later uh, if we have time. Uh, but essentially, we'll unroll the loop. Uh, we get a set of sequences. But what we need to do is uh, essentially um, match the shapes uh, that we feed in. So uh, our, our encoded state may not be exactly in the same dimension as our, um, uh, you know, here in our decoder input sequence. So we need to make sure they match. And there's a, there's a symbol, there's, a, there's an easy way of doing this called broadcast. So let's say you have uh, an array of dimension, uh, you know, um, five, uh, it's, a, it's a one dimensional array with uh, you know, five elements. And you have another array that's a five into five uh, uh, dimension. You can't do oper you, 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 there's a there's a mismatch in shape, but if you want to do operations, the best way to do it actually is uh, there's a function called as broadcast, so you can actually convert the one uh, one D array into a two D array uh, with uh, essentially replicating the same uh, shape. Okay, and what do they fill it with? Same thing. Just the same data. Same data. Yeah. Okay. Broadcast to um, state. So you're just going to pick the first encoded state uh, and the shape. Uh, so we need to give the shape. So the shape would be um, our output sequence length here because that's what we want out. Um, there's a just in the case. So don't don't mess with the other uh, states. Now we'll do the decoder part. Uh, so let's call it decoder out and L2, uh, STM2. Um, I just copy the same thing here. But we want to use the input sequence length here, right? So we need to use the output sequence length because that's the that's how many times we want to unroll the decoder part. Make sense? Yep. So our input is the uh, encoded state, the hidden state. Uh, this so is just. If you're going to do 
encoded state H, you you have to add a D on the line three lines up. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, so we'll just say um, so we'll just reshape the uh, uh, the output so that we can send it through a fully connected layer uh, and. Um, the fully connected layer kind of maps everything uh, from a really high dimension into a dimension that where we want to deal with. So it will be a fully connected layer of essentially, um, you know, all the data, uh, the the entire data dimension that we have. So um, decode out, comma, shape. Uh, so shape generally, what we'll do is we need to shape it with the bat size. So, so just getting batch, uh, a negative one that indicates that just leave everything as it is. Okay, so that's that fully connected, fully connected. Cut out. Um, um, let's declare a variable called data dimension. So data dimension is essentially the length. We need to reshape this. Uh, don't worry about the shapes, we'll visualize it. Transpose it so that it's in the transpose. We'll transpose it so that it's in the shape of. Yeah, the the output where we want. So I'll do um, wisp plot network output um, shape equal to. So we'll just give it a. Um, we we'll just give it a dummy um, array, so we'll what, what we'll say is the data it will be in the shape of uh, bat size, um, bat size, comma. This is our input shape of zero. Okay, data ten is not. I thought I did that. Oh, it's here. Okay, there you go. We have the graph. So each, uh, you know, each input sequence is eight, um, and thirteen is the is essentially. You know why it's thirteen? I'd like to take a guess. Padding. I don't know. Huh? What 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 is thirteen in our um, like uh, in our you know our, no eight is our input sequence like remember the length of our character, the character set the character set is what correct I mean by it, but yeah yep so is exactly in like plus or is it so it's nine uh, and then um, yeah well it, um, thirteen isn't nine right. No, no, no. I, I mean, my number, 10 numbers, plus right. star. Okay, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. The length of the characters. Mm -hmm. So, see here, it goes from 30 to 32. We uh, broadcast. Um, so, we flatten this. Uh, we get essentially, uh, at the end, we get 32 into 13. 
uh, that means that we have 32 is the batch size, right? So 32 was our batch size. So 13 is, so we're getting thir 32 rows, each of size 13. And what we're gonna get is the problem, um, essentially the, 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 the sequences there. So um, we need to um, essentially we'll, we'll map um, this entire thing um, and we'll, we'll transform that back into actual words as we see, uh, sorry, um, characters. So we have our network, but also we need is a loss function, right? We need, we need something that is gonna compare when the network goes bad or makes decisions, we need something to compare that, right? Hey, what you have is not quite correct. So you're off by this amount. Now that that loss function is where the gradients get calculated and the backprop through the backprop process, you get, hey, this is the delta, I need to change the weights and so on. So, so we'll define our loss function. In this case, is the loss function just gonna be to call, does this match the, the right hand side? Yeah. Yeah, I'll just spell it out in this case. So there are loss functions that are um, actually, um, um, you know, inbuilt. I'm just going to spell it out so that uh, people can actually see. So what we're doing to do is use a, a, a log softmax um, loss function. Um, and uh, I'm going to stay off math. But essentially what we're doing is uh, converting um, into uh, log probability. So it's, 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 uh, it's telling us um, which of these characters um, or output sequences um, actually make the most sense. And then we can uh, take the predicted log probabilities and uh, also the actual labels and that's how the loss function calculates the difference. Okay. Gotcha. All righty. So let's declare the MXNet module. Uh, That is mod dot module. It takes the our symbol is going to be the loss function output. Um, We'll use a GPU here. Okay. Because okay. use our own cell doesn't work without a GPU. Okay. That's good. We need to bind uh, our network. Um, shapes equal to a train. Rather than hot coding, I just like to use it from the iterator. Um, so we can just say provide data. Same with label shapes. So we need to bind this so that essentially we get an executor that we can get things. Where is train iter coming from? Train iter? Yeah. Did, did we already make we it? We remember we, yeah, we declared it here. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, okay. Okay. Now we need to initialize the parameters. Uh, so this is initialization of all the weights, right? Um, so 
I mean, this itself is a hot, uh, you know, research topic, but typically we just end up using um, Xavier initialization, which is like the most common one, rather than using random. So if you start at random places, then you're going to take time to kind of converge. So uh, Xavier initialization is actually a pretty good one. A lot of people have uh, end up using it. So it's just kind of this default thing. Uh, remember, um, I think we did use Adam last time. So uh, the whole concept of finding the gradient, we had to walk down like a crazy landscape, which looked like the Mars, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, um, surface. Um, so we'll use an optimizer that does this for us. Uh, we'll just use Adam, and uh, it does come with, um, you know, optimizer parameters uh, and what we'll use is the learning rate which is essentially the steps that we take it's essentially the steps where uh, you know uh, that we end up taking like what what's the what's the rate at which we go down the hill Yeah. Thanks to syntax highlighting. Okay, now let's train. Let's write our training loop. Although we can use the fit function as we did the last time, I thought it'd be cool to, um, you know, kind of spell it out here, uh, just to kind of so that people learn, um, like what is rather than calling a magical function, what's happening. Um, you know, one by one. We're almost there, guys. Total batch, total batches, uh, line of data X, right? We need an integer. So for epoch in epochs, um, we'll define our loss. Like we'll just keep a loss tracker. Remember that we, we need to go through each of our epochs. So we need to reset our iterator, and then uh, essentially for i can't data batch in enumerate train uh, iter. So I'm getting the um, so we have the module has many uh, uh, you know it does have a fit function it has uh, many different sub level function as well so you can use it as a high level API or break it down. So you can just do the forward pass, you can just do the backward pass. So you get really good control and flexibility on when you're doing really nice uh, uh, optimizations or doing some crazy uh, things and you want control. So in this case, um, I'm gonna use the API forward backward, which is gonna do both the forward and backward pass for me. Um, what, what I'm going to do is specify uh, the data batch. A data batch is nothing but a batch of input and output, corresponding input, corresponding output. Okay, and uh, we can just get, uh, so we can get the loss essentially. So uh, get outputs uh, gets us the, because the loss is our last layer in, in the network we declared. So we can just do, uh, we're just getting, you know, what the loss uh, function is. So loss is a scalar, so we, we'll just use a scalar. So average loss, let's, you know, let's compute it per, per epoch, right? So we're in the, uh, we need to compute the losses or uh, over each batch. Make sense? Okay. okay. Yeah. So, and dot update. Update is essentially, so we'll just say, 
uh, average loss, um, yeah, we just normalize it. We don't need to, but okay, that's uh, that's actually uh, print uh, our epoch. And we'll print our average loss. We'll just format it. Uh, okay. Let's see if this is going to work. Okay. Cannot find axis. Oh, I think I have the syntax wrong. Um, it's just axis there, <laughs> singular. Uh oh. That's not good. That's the sick part. Data X is not defined, so. Reconnect. Let's just execute from the start. No. Okay. So are we is data X being built inside of yeah, I think I'm changing something somewhere. Um, so data X by I'm gonna if you press escape and then J and then delete, it'll delete that visualization if you want to look at it all at once. Oh. Okay. I see data X shape here at the bottom. Right. Data X and data Y. Um, it's something, something silly. Uh, I'm just going to look at the uh, log. Uh, that's a big log file. <laughs> I'm running. Oh, shouldn't. Rim's not the you best should, uh, with. You can make Vim tail. quickly, or you can use tail. Yeah, I should have. You All can right. control C and Vim will load it right away. OK. That says uh, CUDA out of memory. You know, I, I, I might have so I have something else running. Um, this is always fun. Kernel. I'll try that. <laughs> The only thing I can think of. Okay, that's better. That is better. No, I, I just had stuff in my GPU. <laughs> you were running another model. I was, yeah, yeah. So yeah, because um, data X didn't uh, wasn't uh, in the GPU. It was like, hey, I don't know what data X is. So gotcha. there you go. So. Uh... Yeah, we, I mean, that model guess, seemed like it changed people, very quickly. For people, um, just run NVIDIA SMI. You get this nice little uh, graphic, as you can see. 
with a lot of stuff on my GPU. <laughs> like you can see like these three things, which are about uh, four gigs and two and a half gigs each. Um, yeah. Interesting. Good thing is I have eight GPUs to work on this machine, so. Um, all right, I don't need this. See, that's, that's looking promising. Look at that, right? Like our, look at that cost function, right? Our loss function goes all the way down. Excellent. Right? I mean, it's still producing, but we just ran it for 100 epochs. Let's give it a spin. Let's see what our models learned, right? Let's, let's give it a spin. Um, to actually speed up, uh, I'm going to copy some stuff uh, for uh, Randall. That's fine. Um, because uh, we still need to do the other demo. I'm hoping that's uh, we can just take the same module, right? Yeah. So hopefully, um, I think it's good. Get data. Let's see. Yep. Generate data. Is that called generate data? There you go. Ha! Look at that. It's going to be between 286, 280, and 210. Yeah, see? That, that's the wrong one. It got. It seems to do addition fine, but multiplication it kind of falters a little bit, right? So maybe our input didn't have enough multiplication. Um, yeah, I mean there are there are a few things, right? The few theories. Uh, one is we only ran it for 100 epochs, right? But also our training sample was um, less. So so it always um, it's a good like I only trained it so far to see that hey our network is learning, right? Like this is a good sign that. It's getting a lot of things right, uh, but it seems like uh, multiplication is not quite okay. So it can mean two different things. Uh, you know, more data is always good. So you had that instinct. So let's go with that instinct. So let's make it 10,000. The good thing is, like, so look at how fast it like trains, right? Like it's like boom, boom, boom. Like each epoch, like is. Uh, look, look at that, right? Remember, we went to like 0.4 with our loss with like 100 epochs. Now we are here at 10 epochs. So having See? more data is really helping. Exactly. And if we had found that more data wasn't helping, what would have been another thing we could have tried? Could we have tried more epochs? Could we have tried more? Correct. Okay. Correct. So if, if we saw the... See, uh, if we keep the data fixed, uh, you saw with the each epoch, you saw the loss was still going down, right? As long as the loss function keeps going down, that's a good sign. Okay. Um, I think we should be done in a minute. Um, questions? Nothing on the Twitch chat. You guys are welcome to ask any questions. They don't have to be directly related to this. Yeah. Otherwise, I think we can move on to the pronunciation because we get to use basically the same code, just different elements, right. right? Look at that now. It can do complex math. <laughs> Woohoo! Right? It's getting the multiplication right. That's pretty cool. And here, look at this. We've got all 100 correct. Teach All right. the computer to do math. You know, who I, if you think, I just want to take a moment to appreciate the fact that it only takes three or four transistors to do basic math. <laughs> and here we have, uh, well, actually, I guess it takes, if we consider three different no, numbers. Many, like, I mean, the gates, I mean, but 
There's a difference, Randall. That that is actually coded. Those are hardwired to do, right. you know, bay flips. Here, the network looked at something and it figured out, hey, when I see a plus operator, I need to do these kind of steps. When I see a star operator, I need to do these kind of things. So it derived so, its own rules. Correct. So it's just like a kid learning. Well, this is what I need to do. This is. Uh, it's not using a table or it's not using a formula to actually compute, but it's actually learned the formula just from looking at the patterns. So it's Each learned the pattern. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right, guys. We'll have some fun here. Um. Yeah, so kind of recap uh, the problem we want to tackle. Um, we will teach, uh, essentially we'll uh, teach a model to um, go from a word to um, uh, phonemes uh, so that um, it is, it's easier or it's telling you where to enunciate and actually pronounce the word correctly. Okay, so we'll use our uh, the data set from CMU called the CMU Pronouncing Dictionary has uh, 134,000 samples. What we'll do is uh, I found a few characters uh, that are not needed. Uh, like there are certain words with um, you know braces in them, and uh, that's essentially certain other enhancements, so I clean that data set and just use something simple. So our data set looks like this. So the words look like, you know, A, A, so on. <laughs> right, right. And they're, uh, you know, they're corresponding, uh, you know, phonemes look like A is A, ah, and A, A. <laughs> right, notice the EY2, like A, like the Y, so the two indicates uh, more stress on the Y, A, A. And uh, A, A, A is triple A. <laughs> yeah, those kind of things uh, tend to throw off the model, but uh, it's, it's fun to have that anyways. Uh, anyways, uh, we have about um, 116,000, um, close to 170,000 words. Uh, we need to define a character set, correct? So what I did was I parsed uh, the entire file and found all the characters to represent. Um, so, so the data set, um, maybe we can look at the data set really quickly. Uh, what's it called? Right, so this is how the data set looks like. So what we do is get all the unique characters uh, and we will treat the input characters as, you know, just like we do normal string. But in this case with uh, the phoneme representation, we'll take A, A, zero as a single character and B and so on as a single character. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so our set looks like this. Basically it's separated by spaces. Correct. So we'll, we'll take, the, so ultimately this is our entire set. Okay. All right. Um, so, but we need a padding character. Uh, we won't use space because space is already being used. So we'll just use a, I don't know, I'll just use plus as a, a random padding character. <laughs> right, make sense? Okay. And I'll have like helper functions that converts the word to um, you know the symbol index uh, because we have a symbol set here, uh, and we'll convert you know we just the same here for from the phoneme to uh, symbol index uh, and symbol index to word. So we'll just have helper functions that can help us convert. Uh, for example, you can see here uh, we can just get the indices of this word, convert. Uh, back 
uh, from you know numbers to the actual characters and so on right make sense yep 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 just like the last time we'll define our input sequence length max uh, and our output sequence length and that will be the max of essentially what the largest word in our dictionary is happens to be 34 I forgot what that word is, but. <laughs> Following so far? Yep, yep, I got you. OK, um, the next is padding. Uh, we need to pad, so helper function. So essentially, we can give it to, you know, uh, um, word here, and then it, it'll, it'll pad it. Um, for the phoneme style, uh, the padding logic, we can probably end up using like regular expression. I did this on the plane, so I did a little bit of an ugly loop here to do that. I could probably squeeze that into a single line or two lines with regular expression, but well, internet was not working on the plane. Uh, here's a sample. So, you know, AA is a a right like that's we we saw that so um, that that seems to be okay now I'll, what I what I'll do is we need to shuffle the data the, it's always good to shuffle your data and rather than having them batch together like it's always good it's a good practice so that your the networks from uh, it's experimentally proven that the network will learn faster. Also, because you're, uh, when you kind of average things across something that is, things that are a little different, you're, you're bound to get better results rather than um, having certain things that are grouped similar and taking an average there. Uh, there's a lot of skew. Um, uh, you can introduce skew. So I, I have a little helper function that helps me shuffle both our uh, training and label arrays together. Sounds good. And then we, just like the last time, we'll define our iterator. Cool? Yep, gotcha. OK, our data dimension is, again, our symbol set, which is, uh, I don't know, 170 something numbers. OK, our bat size is 128. And notice, that's the only difference in how we do the network. So everything else is the same as that. Everything else is the same. Just same stuff. Eyes. Same thing. OK. Um, and then uh, this actually took a long time to train. Uh, it took a it took a hour and a half to actually get to a good because you know we had a much bigger data set. Um, so I You're think I trained it for like nice. 200 or 300 epochs. Um, and uh, you can see the cost function goes to like 0 0.054, which is, again, that's kind of where it uh, stopped and I, I stopped there. Uh, ignore the epoch 5 because I was training it manually. So I had run about 200 epochs before this, which is why it's printing. <laughs> um, and then uh, I've got a helper function here which has actually added, um, you know, the word here. Um, so, so Randall, like, um, so that's that's how the model was trained. So actually, to test the model, there are, there are a couple of metrics, right? So we can actually look at how exactly the match was between the words. But also, there's a fun way to test this because uh, this is something that we can have. Uh, convert from the actual enunciations to actually give it to a computer to actually speak out, right? So I was thinking what would be cool to, uh, you know, uh, actually get uh, like something other uh, that we know can, uh, to talk uh, this through. So poly. Poly is a great example. So we actually can use poly with a phoneme set uh, and get Polly to uh, validate or 
you know, talk uh, uh, or convert this and speak exactly the way we want it to and see if it sounds right and see if that's the real American way. So uh, I've been kind of coding along here and I have some code that I can send you. I think you'll need to, if you want to, if you want to try it. I mean, first, I guess we should uh, pass in kind of an arbitrary string like Randall or Sassolato yeah. or something and, and grab that output. Can we do that? Yeah, I mean, you want something. Uh, you want um, something. Uh, why, why don't we try a Twitch chat? Or, uh, no, or yeah. just Twitch. There you go, Twitch. Uh, OK, so then I, do you have, um, if, can you like pip install Pi Audio or, or brew install Pi Audio, something like that? I can. Uh, and then I will send you some code that will convert uh, from, because this is coming yeah. out in ARPABIT. So I'll send yeah. you some code that will send this to uh, uh, IPA, uh, which Polly can read. Now, um, I'm going to switch over to my screen for just a second. Sure. Yeah, well, I install, yeah. So, yeah, why don't you go uh, while I figure this out? Uh, so for I have this thing. I don't know if you guys remember this from last time. Basically, it. Uh, I'll make it listen on the AWS channel instead. So, let me... so this will. Uh, I have to wait for it to stop. So, kernel is starting. Well, just a second. Come on. This is lame. It's so slow. Here we go. Uh, so I'm going to tell this to connect to the AWS channel, and then uh, it'll just read out any chat that you guys send. And I'm going to play around with converting uh, basically the CMU type input into the uh, Unicode IPA type input. So if I type something in Twitch chat now, like, um, hello, my name is Randall. It should Hello, my name is Randall. And that's just calling out to Polly and, and running something. But what we really want to do is something like this, uh, where Legit. we uh, pass in a type of SSML and it will have something like phonemes alphabet equals. Let me change my quotes here to be a little bit easier. Uh, IPA. While you're doing that, I'm uh, getting poly. Uh... Um, on the console, and so that people can do some easy uh, testing. <laughs> yeah. for fun. Let, let me actually start with the console as well. So, um, do you have an example of what the the phonemes look like within Poly, like how you send them? Yeah, I, I do. So, um, if you want to switch, I can uh, try that. Let me uh, just try really fast on this one. I'm pretty sure it just goes phoneme. So it's uh, it's a sense. Do you want me to? I can put it on the Twitch channel. Speak, you say 
phoneme alphabet so equals if the pH equals the greater than twitch there. less than slash phoneme uh, slash the... speak. So um, let me just get an example here. Uh, Smile. What's how how is the the can you pass me the alphabet output of one of the variables? Yep. I just want to make sure that this is all working. So I'll give you a few examples. So that's Twitch. Twitch T W I H one C H. Let me try my name. Sunni less U W zero N I H one L. So I'll take Sunil since that's a little bit longer. <laughs> um, and then we should try Twitch as well. Um, so let me hop over into. Can you guys see my screen still? Do I need to make the text bigger? So basically what I, what I want to call is lexconvert dot convert from uh, CMU to Unicode IPA and then the text Right. H one C H. So that didn't work. There's some sort of error, but I'm pretty sure if I go and call out to the utility this way, let's convert. Okay. So this gives me the the IPA, and I can go here. I have an example with Twitch uh, on the console. Oh, yeah. there you go. Right. Uh, you need to close the speak. Uh, phone the speak. There's something that's missing in your tag. So no, that should be pH equal to so that. Ill. I got it now. So I'm ill. Yep. So what we want to do in the code here is S and pH equals da, da, da. So we'll say text equals speak uh, phone name alphabet equals uh, this again, sorry. I don't remember what's valid uh, SSML and what's not. <laughs> <laughs> And then pH equals, and then uh, IPA and text. So we'll pass this in as text. Uh, and then let me just make sure I have this kind of convert function working correctly. Um, phone to phones to phones. Uh, I'm just going to try and hit uh, uh, have an example and see if it's going to spell out Twitch. Sure, go for it. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, I think the audio doesn't pipe in, I guess. Maybe. Model says Twitch. Model says Twitch. I heard it that time. <laughs> so it's saying Twitch. Twitch. Yeah. 
No, that's because the conversion isn't quite direct, right? Like it doesn't, right. like the IPA uh, doesn't have, uh, so the CH um, has like a few variants that map uh, in here. So, I so see depending my, upon my tool gives out. Rather interesting yeah. actions here. So the, the output that I got was slightly different from what you were using. You might want to try yeah. this one and see what you get. TWT. I'll switch back to your screen for a second. If you wanna if you wanna try using the text that I just sent in the Twitch chat, it's slightly different from what you have. That's weird. Oh no, I think I switched back the, the audio. audio. Model says Twitch. That's ah. right. that's right. Okay. Model says Twitch. Twitch, so, yeah. Let me, Your conversion. Let me get this. Mine was a manual mine was a manual Wikipedia lookup. <laughs> a little bit faster if we use uh, some code to do that. Yes, so, yes, of course. Um, I just have to get it working in Python, so I'm hopping over to do that real quick. Um, so I think if I call convert... Oops. Right. What alphabet Meanwhile, is... Well, I'm just going to play a little bit here by making the British voice speak American. <laughs> Just for fun. Model says Twitch. Model says Twitch. Model says Twitch. How bad? I wonder how the Indian accent. Model says Twitch. That was very American. Sorry. Model says Twitch. Yeah. That was good. What alphabet is IPA? David. Okay, I've got, I've got it working. Awesome. Um, so what's the best way for me to send you this file? Oh, um, can you just like do it on the uh, sample code? Um, Let me make a gist actually, so you can copy it and include it. Yeah, so this is, yeah. I, I'm modifying a library that I found online. The library is originally by somebody who I think works at CMU. Um, and it's very much academic code, like extremely. So this is originally by Silas S. Brown. Um, and it's under GPU or GNU, GPL. So we can modify it and work with it. Just Fellow AWS engineer PogChamp. <laughs> so I'm going to send you two pieces of code in a gist right now. Uh, Lex convert. Um, actually, I feel like I had a better model uh, like with like 100 epochs. Like this model is a little... Uh, a little off? A little off, yeah. It's, it's strange. Um, we can always try a different model, so we can actually just say Apox. Let's see what models I have. So I have a 200. So, Sunil, if you can grab the code uh, that's here and put that in your notebook, I think that you will be able to take the output okay. of your commands. All right. And uh, HTTPS colon slash slash gist dot github dot com slash ranman slash 3e39e9749 b8d4e194a7 75961c055. Google. It called it GitHub. I wonder how Polly pronounces GitHub. 
<laughs> okay, so what should I do? Just call in. Uh... Uh, if you just take the. Um... Wow. Here, I'll switch to your. I should have just. Work I should. Have... Yeah, it's a lot of work to to translate between these dictionaries. But if she you said, just... "Get up." No, I should have just uh, copied Secret this to a file. Yeah, I just copied this to a file and then just imported the function. Wow. Very long. <laughs> it has, like I said, academic code. It has um, semicolons and three three spaces of indentation. You can just save the lex convert pile to that workspace. Yeah. Lex, lex convert dot pi. Oh man, like the scrolling is just killing me. Sorry. Um, but uh, then what? with pi audio, what you want to do is you want to take the output text from your model and call lex convert dot pi. And oh, yeah. Um, what's this file? Uh, I'm just gonna call it friend. Oh no. Am I on the screen? Uh, you are. You want me to put that away? Nope. That's just... Uh, Got a set paste. Yeah. Yep. I thought I had it, but... I'm going to switch now. back to my screen and make this a little bit easier. I'm just going to call my method oh. um, speak. Hey, uh, the animation is actually cool. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can control C that, and it'll stop. No, I did. I, I did. Oh. I did. But it just, wow. there's a lot happening with Wim. <laughs> You know what's the here's a here's a joke. Um, you know what's the best way to generate random characters, like uniquely random characters? Uh, try and have somebody exit Vim. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think you think Vim is hard? Actually, Emacs is harder because to exit Emacs, you have to go through ten years of uh, finger binding and stretching. So you have to basically train piano for half of your life in order to be able to exit. Uh, Emacs in a timely manner. Uh, so, do you you have the input word and you have the other part, right? So I'm yeah. just gonna I'm gonna make a method really fast that uh, I'm gonna call it ARPA that Caratex to the power of C. I should have just done this. Oh, I think we got it. I think we've got it now. Lex convert dot. Convert phones to phones. No, we just call you. CMU Unicode IPA. Are the bet? Text. Uh, David MCO sixty five asks, "What is Arpabet?" Uh, Arpabet is the CMU Dict output format, um, but it's not just used by CMU Dict, uh, except it is pretty much only used by CMU Dict. It looks like you downloaded the version with all the GitHub stuff in it. If you if you go to the raw gist, it'll give you the um, just the. Randall, um, we are a little over. Does the stream stop or? No, no, no. This, the stream goes as long as we need to. But if we need to, if you need to head out, that's fine. I can. Um, yeah, let's I think, let's, I, I think we've let's give it five more minutes. Yeah. Let's give this five more minutes. Yeah. It's it's too close. So if you Stays call, I think if you just call like, um, I'll put it in the Twitch chat. If you just call that. It'll download the https colon slash slash gist dot github user content dot com slash randman slash three e thirty nine e nine thousand seven hundred and forty nine b eight d four e one hundred and ninety four a seven kick seven five nine six one c o five five slash raw slash e nine hundred twenty but three f f I, I wouldn't put this into like if name main or anything like that. I, I would if if you okay. Just, let's just do it my way really fast. 
call okay. that, call that wget command that I sent you so that it's got the same name, and then I'm just going to send you a method that you can run, and it'll do it. Okay. So wget wget the gist. Yep. And, and name it lexconvert.py. Um, okay, done. Cool. And then I'm going to send you this method really fast. I'm just making sure it's all right. Um, so IPA equals. Uh, so, OK, cool. I'm, I'm going to send this to you in Chime. Is that OK? OK. Yeah. Chime did not like me copy pasting that much text, but that command if it's just it just creates a method called speak, and then you pass in the alphabet output, and you pass in the uh, text that was the original input, and I think it should just work. All right, let's see that. Okay, on characters. So uh, speak. Oh, that, that has tabs in it, so it might not work. Yeah, no, it's OK. It's, it's all in the same uh, uh, context, so it, should, it can work. Um, same code block. So uh, what, what should I give it? Um, so the, the I, I mean, just pass in one of the outputs. OK. So like aluminum or? Yeah, Embarcadero. OK. And then comma Embarcadero. I don't think it does uh, matter what we say. OK. OK, why well, side D, I think. Oh, it, there's if at the end of that line, you have to put a new line. I'm sorry, I messed that up. I joined two lines together by accident. Oh, here. So if you, where voice and stream are joined together. So, yeah, it's it's actually, go one more down. I guess no, so, it's gonna, so I'm going to change my. I can just send it to you and chime again with the right thing. Let me format. Are you sending it? Here? Yep, I'm sending it now. Uh, so. Chime does not like big messages. <laughs> Okay, response and yes, yeah, string. Okay, so close. We haven't defined voice. That says. Uh, oh, you might have to pass in a region. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So just do oh, region like, name. Region name, yeah. Yes, one. Voice is not defined. Uh, yeah, just yeah. So we'll just do no. Oh, it's lowercase SSML and not yeah. lowercase. Yeah. Thank you, friendly error message. Invalid SSML request. Um, so it's speak phoneme alphabet. Yeah, it's none. So so it, did, it didn't return. Uh, I think you know what? Oh wait, does it take space, Randall? The function. Uh, it should, yeah. So if I if I switch back to my screen. Um, Oh, wow, I've been on my screen the whole time. I'm sorry. Uh, OK, oh. so if I go to my screen and I call, oh, I have the arguments in the wrong. Put the text uh, first. Sorry, sorry, no. 
I, I have it right. Uh, can you send me the Embarcadero? The no, you're sending thing? text. Uh, no, you got it the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Sorry. Okay. I mean, the text really doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Aha, that's fine. Perfect. Uh, um, invalid SSML request. Or SSML formatting seems to be off. Oh, I'm not closing phoneme. If you close phoneme, it'll work. Okay. I did you hear I'm hearing um I'm out of the audio here. Uh, well the, the pH is still showing up as none. No. Oh yeah. No Text. What is this? I mean, that was a great output. No, I think you have the format wrong. Like, uh, that's why. We'll just switch it. No, I, because. Yeah, no. Uh, anyways, I'll just switch to, uh, I need to end the stream. So okay. uh, I'll just go to uh, the, Console, I get it too. Model says Embarcadero. And then? Model says Embarcadero. Model says Embarcadero. Not bad. I just have a you know, voice. Uh... Model says Embarcadero. Wait. That's a creepy voice. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I also have to go. So. Model says Embarcadero. There you go. All right, that's. We'll, we'll um, see if we can't get this working a little bit better before we post it online. Yeah, for sure. All right, thanks guys. Uh, thanks for listening. Um, we'll we'll have the code uh, online uh, next week. Uh, we'll deal with images. All right, I'm excited about that. Thanks again, everybody, for joining. Uh, thanks for sticking with us for so long. I'm glad we got something sort of working. Uh, we will post the notes from this episode. Well, uh, we we only did we only didn't get the audio working, but yeah, we, hey, we, we got the math. The model still learned to do math. It learned to do the conversion. So, yeah. Yep. All right. Bye, everybody. Okay. Right. See you. Guys.